The Camara has been in the game for a very long time, so is it still worth it? Does it have the stats, the armor, and the capabilities to still keep up? And because it is in the shop right now, is it actually worth purchasing? Let's find that out. The stats of the vehicle in terms of, for example, the gun do look quite good, but different for a medium tank. This vehicle has 440 alpha damage, 218 standard penetration, and 2000 DPM, which is quite nice. The weapon handling aim time 1.7 seconds and 10 degrees of gun depression and a powder weight ratio of 17 it allows this vehicle to traverse the map quite quickly. Before we have a look at the armor, let's do a very risky move right here because the light tank has decided he wants to be a heavy tank in the city and I've taken a quite aggressive move forward here on the medium side of Molendike. But with this move, I allow the three tank destroyers behind me to get some shots and already finish off the MX AC-48. Now obviously I don't want to push in too quickly here. I see one of the tank destroyers is coming with me, which means I'm going to have the support to hold this position down now. And also the light tank is now in the middle where he might be able to do some crossfire. So now I can take map control right here. And that is one of the most essential things of this game. And that is taking the map control. If you control the map, you control the engagement. If you control the engagement, you control the outcome of the engagement. So here, we're going to push forward into the bush. And now we have an AT-15 to deal with, which doesn't have the alpha damage, but does have a significant amount of DPM and also armor. So I can out-trade him like this vehicle can with the majority of medium tanks and even some heavy tanks. This vehicle can simply out-trade them with the 440 alpha damage. But in the DPM case of an AT-15, yeah. You have to trade, you can't win a DPM fight. Now here, I know that AT, he's sitting up there. I can drive below him without him being able to fire down. I spot the cheese over there and put a shot into him. And now we're going to fight this guy. 10 degrees of gun depression is perfect for an engagement like this because the AT-15 can't really do much if he tries to get up. I just take a shot at him and reverse around the bunker. And now all I'm going to have to do here is just simply trade with him completely he does have some decent alpha damage on his vehicle but it's not enough now the enemy team is already falling apart because they don't have a lot of map control and the tank destroyer that was supporting me earlier has now decided that he is going to complete the encirclement of the enemy team having me deal with this vehicle on my own now ideally i want to do this without getting shot so i'm going to be approaching this very carefully because i need about a, a third of a gun depression to do it but the AT-15 flubs a shot, and now I'm going to be able to peek over and take that shot. Have some patience, because sometimes with patience, the enemy's going to fire, they're going to miss. You can peek and have a free shot right there. And now, four versus five. I'm going to push around the outside again, which is what I do with most medium tanks, really. If they are fast enough, play around the enemy team. Don't sit in front of them, but play from their side, right? Whenever, wherever the enemy is pointing, don't be there. Just drive around them. It's very easy said. And it is very difficult to be done. But in this case, on the camera, it does work quite well. He's looking at the heavy. I'm going to fire at him. And now, 4v4 right here. We still have a full HP Waffentrager in the corner. And he is the one that has to do a lot of the heavy lifting now. Or simply the object 752 because he's quite healthy as well but that Waffentrager in the back he's stopping the camera he's stopping the cheese he's stopping the t30 from making a move around the outside and he's essentially boxing them in and also finishing him off the camera and now it's a 4v1 this thing is one so there is only one thing left to do and that is to do as much damage as possible and that's kind of where the thing falters a little bit because the dpm is only 2000 and even though the dpm a lot of tier 8 mediums is a lot lower than it should be for this one especially so you're gonna have to play those 440 alpha damage and just pick your time because 11 was a little bit of brain and also pick your engagements wisely now we've learned that this vehicle can dish out the damage but can it take it as well now the camaro's armor isn't really that great it works against some tier sevens but the hull for example 153 millimeters at the bottom 194 at the top so not really much going on there even if you use the full 10 degrees of gun depression you can still get penned to a certain degree if you go all the way down then it starts to become unpenable but the turret itself is very flat and only about 200 millimeters so you can be penned right here so keep the vehicle moving back and forth to avoid the enemy hitting your turret because if they do and they have premium rounds or they aren't a tier 8 medium tank with 185 standard penetration for example they're going to go straight through the turret so keep the vehicle moving side armor is not much better 70 millimeters on the side and then 90 millimeters here 
on the bottom of the hull, and you do have this shield right here of six millimeters, so you do have a little bit of protection. If you are fighting this vehicle from the side, just go for the turret. It is quite massive and easy to pen. So that's pretty much the armor of the Camara. And to also add insult to injury, we also have a Coppola on top that can be penned as well. So the armor on this vehicle, definitely not a strong suit. And you want to be playing this vehicle carefully. Obviously, that's not what I'm going to do. Now, playing this vehicle carefully can be of assistance, but I want to have fun. I've been playing this game for 10 years. I don't care about stats anymore. It's about having fun. Fun. So, what is this vehicle truly about? That is simply having that alpha damage. Now, the aim time would be a little bit lower. It takes quite a while to be an accurate shot. But the armor that I just told you about that isn't very effective, it is effective if the enemy can't aim and shoots at the fringe parts of this vehicle, just like that glacial did right there. And obviously, if you have a tank that has very low standard penetration, they're also going to struggle, especially as a tier 7. So it can work out quite well in that Chimera. This is how you don't play, right? You always want to have your exit plan before you have your entry plan, basically, right? If you peek a corner, you have to know that you can also get out of that corner before you even get into it. But that Chimera, he overpeaked, he took a shot, and then he took way too long to get back behind cover and he got punished for it completely. So don't do that. Always know how you're going to get out of the situation before you get into it. Because if you just get into it and you don't know how to get out, you might not get out at all. So there's that, where you just that guy and have no map awareness whatsoever and just get absolutely clobbered to death. Always look at the minimap. Look around yourself. What is going on? Which tank can engage you? Which tank can't engage you? And what can you engage? For example, like what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for the STA-1 right here because I know there's a K2 up there. Those guys, I don't really care about them right now, but the STA decides he's going to come to me instead. And now the problem is this vehicle doesn't really have the DPM to take this fight evenly. However, the STA-1, he has a problem because there is another Chimera and there is a Burrask at the back, which means he can't actually take this fight evenly and that's his problem and now he's gonna have to pull back which was not a very great play he didn't pay attention to the other two mediums that are supporting me and therefore he's now getting punished for it put another shot into the sta because i can trade and now the is gonna finish him off quite neatly and now it's only really a corpse of an elephant and a k2 that are left alive and with a camera and a barask which are and also a wz120 which are three of the vehicles that I actually recommend you purchase against the K2, which was available free and is also quite good. There is really not much contest in this game right here, but whenever the Barras, the Camara, or the WZ comes to the shop, eh, generally I can recommend them unless they're sold in either a draw or they're very overpriced. And I want to apologize here for the Barras for just driving into him. Not very... D driving has never been my strength, ever. Uh, but uh, eh, it's not really that important now. I have enough hit points, I could take theoretically another shot from the K2, so I'm just going to push forward and go for damage, because that's what fun is, and 2.6k done as well, right here. And now, I wasn't really planning on showing this particular battle as well, because as you can see right here, I'm doing the thumbnail, but this thing was just so insane that I just have to put it in here. First of all, we have a medium disadvantage, one medium against two, so taking the medium side in the middle here is even more essential because here's the thing medium fight is faster than the heavy fight so if the mediums beat the mediums the medium can then swoop around the back and fight the heavies because the heavies fight each other for a longer time most of the time mediums are faster tend to have less armor which means they're easier to be penned but they also most of the time have more dpm so controlling the medium engagement can be essential especially if you have a medium or light tank disadvantage if you take those over then you can have a bit larger chance of winning now you can't win every match remember that even 65 percent is very impressive already so don't bother too much there is going to be 30 percent of matches that you're just not going to win no matter what happens unless you're a try hard and you platoon with another one now progetto is very much the opposite of that he's a try not because he's camping in spawn and there are three more enemy players camping in spawn right here including a vk100 so, yeah, that, that's just why I had to show this. I mean, battles like this, you, you're not getting prepared for it anywhere. And remember, any guide or review or something, it's not going to prepare you for the real world. It's going to give you an indication or any of that. But in the end, 
No matter how many guides you watch, it's you that has to get better. Because if you watch a thousand hours of guides and then you play one battle, you're still not going to be much better. So keep that in mind. Most skill that you obtain is by playing the game. So, and experiencing situations like this. Obviously, the Panther is going to dip and I'm going to sporadically look back at the VK. Can I get another shot? Most likely not. And now here's the Panther. I know where he is. He's hiding behind that container. So, no. Oh. Did you see that? Did you see that? Getting crushed. And I took a shot right in that very moment. And these kind of little details are going to give you tiny, minute advantages over enemy players. And if you know those kind of things, you're just going to play better than the enemy. And that's just all these things are going to eventually add up to whatever win rate you want to have. Because remember, the only person that cares about your stats is you. Nobody else should care about your stats as long as you're carrying your own weight. So as long as you're happy, just keep doing it. And if getting better stats makes you happy, do that. If getting better stats doesn't make you happy, why would you? So now three enemies left. The Panther's just going to... I, I don't know. I, he's just living his best life. I mean, he's terrible and he's probably dragging his team down, but he is living his best life. And in the end, eh, it's about having fun. And the camera definitely is fun. So I can definitely recommend this vehicle.